the most high God. We want to welcome the Holy Spirit this morning once again. This morning, Rabayando 
Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Yes, you are. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Say to me, what sorrow? Worship the Lord in the spirit right now. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Oh Jesus Christ Worship him in the spirit. Just give him all the glory this morning. Bless his holy name this morning. Oh, there is none beside our God. You deserve the glory, Lord. Holy Calabaro, Shakanda Ravariani, Zazuri and Dolobolo, Shakabana Ravaluan, Rapaya Catarabaru and Alaba, Zazuri and the Vilayan, Dolobiravan, Oh, Shakabana, Likanda Ravaro, Shaklari, Zazuri Alavaluan, the Vilayan, Holy Paya Catanda Ravaluan, the Vilayan, Zakataria, the Lily, Rakaya Catarabaru. Rupoyolo, Rapayalalo, Lady Moriantarabaria, Holy Paya Caraba 
Rasul Tiruburi Arabah Zikir ya Thank you Holy Spirit Your Holy Presence is welcome into our midst this morning once again We say good morning to you Holy Spirit once again In your presence there is fullness of joy In your presence we have empowerment In your presence we have healings In your presence lives are transformed In your presence destinies are changed in your presence, everything is possible. This morning, Holy Spirit, we welcome you once again. Take your seat. Take your seat. Take your seat. And take over the service this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are the God of truth. As we are about to hear your word this morning, Lord, empower me to speak only the truth. You are the Lord that speaks to transform lives. This morning, speak to transform somebody's life. My God, you are the Lord that speaks to convict. You are the Lord that brings many to the saving knowledge of Jesus. This morning, oh Lord, grant me supernatural utterance to speak to convict. And bring somebody to the saving knowledge of Jesus. My God, you know the story of each and everyone present here this morning. May they never go the same. Meet them at the point of their needs. By your word this morning, let the sick be healed. By your word this morning, every satanic gang up around the life of anybody, let it be destroyed. My God, by the end of this service, let the testimony be, the Lord has done something new in my life. We thank you because it is already settled. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus and take your seat, please. Hallelujah. On behalf of the owner of the church, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I welcome each and everyone to the presence of God this morning. And I would like to thank God for the opportunity granted to share his word with you. The prophet is out of town. And this week he sent a message that I should preach to the lovely saints this morning. Na yenim se nyina yesofo pani ayo di for ja conference ni oman mu nante odin kra sonko de ma me se o chi mu nyina na am sunti no o se me fanya me asem we fam remo i want to salute the presence of our first lady the mama of this commission bon sam bon sam god bless you for your presence yeah mama o fear her bless you for your hard work ye chi ane sonko and i'm also acknowledging all the leaders of the church the president of the men and the women fellowship, our shepherds, all our pastors who are here in absentia. And most importantly, I salute each and every one present. Hallelujah. Amen. During this month of November, the prophet has been teaching us about covenant. In fact, our prophetic focus for the month is commanding the supernatural with covenant and sacrifice. And so over the past two, three weeks, the prophet has been teaching us, those of us who have been coming for second service, he's been talking about the covenant guarantee. In other words, the immutability of God. Today, I'm going to be taking up from where we, we he stopped. And I'm teaching from, as usual, this book entitled Covenant. I'm preaching specifically from page 57. And my sermon is entitled, The Covenant of Purity. The Covenant of Purity. Now and then so yeah, two or so free baby, yeah, papa, yeah, how they call, you know. 
Na ye hwe enwoma ye chirechire frumi ya ye papa nwoma ya to ni din apamono kratefe to so adunu ba ko na ne chirechire no e chirese ye apam a ye de kronkron ye ene eko by way of setting the premises or better so putting some introductions in place it's important for all of us to understand the fact that when you become a born again Christian you are in a covenant relationship with God. When you are in this covenant relationship with God, there are things you must know, there are things you must do, according to the book written by the prophet, and then I realize that there are things or there are what you must be. Christosum apamia uninyamia koi. In other words, there's a place for knowledge. There is a place for practices. And then there is a place for being or some lifestyle or nature which is expected of you. Inti yewo akwe so, as a matter of fact, the prophet has been teaching us about the covenant guarantee, which is what you must know. And from Numbers chapter 20, what is it, 23 verse 19, God tells us this. He says what? God is not a man that he should lie, neither a son of a man that he should what? Repent. In other words, God is the same. God is unchangeable. He does not lie. So if all of us are in a covenant relationship with God, as the prophet taught us last week, God is constant. He doesn't change. In other words, he's part of the deal. Is guaranteed. So if God is constant, it means human beings are the variable. <laughs> but most Christians today knowing that they are in a covenant relationship with God, will identify with their father, ah, I have been praying. I have been asking God for this X, Y, Z. God seems not to be answering me. I have been sowing seeds. I have been giving sacrifices. I have done all manner of things. So what is wrong? As a matter of fact, you know all that you have to know about covenant. Possibly you know that God doesn't change. He's constant. He says, if you ask me, I'll give you. The prophet tells us that you sow a seed or you sacrifice. God is supposed to respond. And God is telling us that I am constant. I don't change and I don't tell a lie. So my part is guaranteed. But he's not responding. So where is the problem? Come to think of it, the problem is with you and I. And from Sony from me and all. Hallelujah. Amen. If you read this book, the prophet outlines 12 covenant obligations, as in things you must do, things you must be practicing as a covenant, as a covenantee of this covenant. When I read all these covenant obligations, one of them stood out. And it leads me to my foundational test for this very sermon. 
I'm speaking from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 through to, 9, to 21. Shall we see that scripture? Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from what? Iniquity. Next verse. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Last verse. This is my emphasis. If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. May the good Lord bless his holy reading. Amen. You want to translate? Now so, Onyankupon nina suo timho pintin kura anso anu yi. Eradi ni mwon a wayane die. Eni ma obiyar a obo eradi di inchene hun free ni a ente hun. Enti. Na efi efi kesie mu ni sika ne jwete ni oma ankon. Na nia ni dotye die enso wo mubi. Na wobu bi. Ne ebi enso ye ngomo. Na se obite ne hon fri ye nomu hon a. Obaye adie a wobu o. Na wate hon. O ura anon de ye bribi. E ye ye. Na wo siye siye de re e juma pa. Re ye e juma pa biara. Amen. Amen. So I indicated that if God is constant, he does not lie. As a matter of a God, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 that upholding all things by the word of his power. So if the problem is, is with you and I, remember I said earlier on that there are three things associated with every covenant. Knowledge. So knowledge empowers you to know what to do. Right? The practices help you to walk in the covenant, the do's and don'ts. Now, the third one is what to be, the nature, the lifestyle. Uh, and, and this is where the point is. It is your son. Set me catch your senior me and son. Anna, a war upon moon at here. Near a was a wound him. Near a was a woe ye. And in yes, I want us away. When you are in a covenant relationship with God, you must know the nature of God. So and the very nature of God is holiness. He is holy. You cannot be in this covenant and be the opposite of God. The, the, the word of God says in Re Revelation chapter 4 verse 8, the angels were singing and praising God. They said, well, holy Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, the God who was, the God who is, and the God who is to come. Now you can't revelation human a ye nyen nim si a trust a kron 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 ni wo awrade. Nyame a o ho, nyame a o ba ene nyame a o tena ho. Everything about God is holy. Bibia wo nyame ho ye kron kron. His name is holy. His word is holy. His house is holy. The very nature of God is holy. So in the book of Amos, the, the, the prophet says, can two walk together except they be agreed? In other words, you cannot be in this covenant if you are not living a holy life. And you see, the thing about holiness is that it is what guarantees your, 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 your inheritance in this covenant. Holiness is the very foundation of life in the supernatural. 
It is a life expected of you and I walking in this supreme covenant. If you are not living holy, forget it. The covenant will not deliver. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Think of, you have been praying. You have been fasting. But God is not delivering. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. You have sown all the seeds in this world. You have done all the fastings in this world. But God is not responding. In fact, he even gave you the first child. You are waiting for the second child. It is not coming. It is not from God. See, most instances, we are blaming the devil. And we are refusing to ask ourselves questions. God is always saying that I don't change. My blessings for you are supposed to come upon you. So if they are not delivering, I'm, I'm saying it, the problem is with you and I. Hallelujah. There are certain things we need to know about holiness. And the first thing we need to appreciate is that holiness is the will of God. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3. The word of God says, even this is the will of God, even your sanctification. That you should what? Abstain from fornication. See, in other words, anything that is in the will of God attracts express attention from God. But you see, holiness is so important also that Jesus Christ, when he came on earth, the only prayer formula he gave, what we call the Lord's prayer formula, there is a prayer topic about holiness. He says what? Lead us not into what? Temptation. That is a prayer of holiness. But the, the, the truth is that most people do not pray to live a holy life. We ask all the things in this world. All the physical things. But never do we ever spend time asking God that we want to remain sanctified. You can be serving God in the church. You can be an usher every day. You come to clean. You can be what? A chorister. You sing from your heart. You can give the biggest sacrifice in this world. You, 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 you can be the most loyal person in the church to the prophets. You can be what? The one who gives the highest offering in the church. But if you are not living in holiness, if you don't have purity as a lifestyle, forget it. So what about this holiness? What at all about it? What at all about it? Whilst reading this book and meditating on it, I discovered something very interesting. Holiness is both a covenant and a sacrifice. Holiness is a covenant and at the same time what a sacrifice. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. He says what? what? Brethren, mm. I beseech you by the message of God that ye present your bodies a living what? Sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God which is your reasonable what? Service. This is the basis for the statement that holiness is both a covenant and a sacrifice. 
Okay, Caroma, Fongoma, a Tidumi, a Chamber, a Code Corner, or Enti and Yanum, Mijinon Yakupon, Homo Brosso, Mutumu for Se, Monfa, Munipa, Dia, in Siho, Se, a Fordier, a Tia, a Se, a Yakronkon, a Son Yakuponi, a Enimu, Yamasom, a Jenny, Womuno. I am teaching. I wish somebody is here. Yes. Give it up unto Jesus. Bounce my yesu. Bounce my yesu. Bounce my yesu. So, you know what this scripture means. If holiness is both a sacrifice and a covenant, it makes you and I a potential altar. Se krum krum ye, e ya forebo ani apama ne e kako ye se minu miyo nu ye ya fori muchiya. Think about Jesus. For what Jesus knows, Jesus so he knows no sin. When he came on earth, no sin was found in this man. Oba e na boni biya ni ni ho. And eventually, he ended up on the cross by way of sacrifice for you and I. Ni ni ne chino. And by that supreme sacrifice, we can mention in the name of Jesus, and then wonders will start to happen. So you say something, eh? Your holiness is the only way you can attract the supernatural. We go on evangelism. People will pray for the sick. Nothing happens. Mm. <laughs> People yes. will stand here and blast in tongues. And when you are at the junction, you can be hearing their voices. But what's wrong? Check your life. Check your life. Now, hear this one. Anytime sin enters your life, there is a separation between you and God. Isaiah 59 verse 1 and 2. Anytime sin enters your life, the covenant relationship we have with God is broken. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. Next verse. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you. That he will not hear. So you are calling God. You are praying. You are giving sacrifices. God has turned his face because of your what? Sins. The covenant will not deliver. Or say, she, a radin sang it here, set a son or jet, Nana son so, and yet they set a ring till I said, Namum, mo, mumu ya, ne dear, and mamma, name Munyan Copon in term at Tete. Namu bonne, na akata, nanny a free mo. So, any time you sin, when you are not living right, when iniquity is found in your life, God's face is turned. The covenant you have with him or the supreme covenant he has with us will not deliver in your life. Think about Adam and Eve. When God created Adam, he placed him in the garden of Eden. And then he gave him dominion over all the living things. As a matter of fact, it's a big, I mean, a, it's a huge privilege to be asked by God to name all the animals in this world. Adam and Eve virtually assume the supernatural nature of God. Adam and Eve, they were fellowshipping with God. They can do things as a supreme being does. But the very day, Genesis chapter 3, that the devil came over to Eve. 
Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, that it said, What well, now the serpent was very subtle among all the animals. So, Satan came to Eve with subtlety. With suggestions. With enticements. And Eve yield. Now, Eve, AJ Woman, upon some. The very day that sin enters into their life in the Garden of Eden, they were separated. The covenant relationship they had with God was broken. They could not assume the supernatural nature they, were, they had earlier. So you see, You can be sleeping with young girls. Nothing seems to be happening. The word of God says in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. It says what? There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. The end thereof is what? Death. So, you, you might think you are having fun. Sleeping with people's husband. Sleeping with young girls. And you claim you are having fun. People are giving you fans. You are sleeping with men. Getting money for what? Hostel fee. Pay your school fee. To you is a fan. There is a way that seems right unto you. You can be telling lies to remain social. But your end will be miserable. Telling lies in the office. Invoicing and invoicing. To you, you are making money. You go on trip. You will not sleep in that hotel. But you produce VAT invoices. You are making money. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. You are a student. Your dad and your mom is paying your school fees. But you'll be following men. Calling them sugar daddy. They will become salt daddy. <laughs> Bounce them. Sort the daddy. Sort daddy. Bible says, and just wait, or is it what an equal balance is an abomination to the Lord? Mm. I love to use this example. It sounds funny. You are selling beans mm. or maize in the market with a long cap. Then you go and punch under. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord. So, you see, if you think about it, our lives, mm. our character, the things we do, the, the ways we live, that is what is making God not respond. If you are a born again Christian and lies are part of your life, very soon you will lie down. Let me share four things with you about sin. Sin is very, very enticing. When you go to the book of Genesis, from verse, I think, three, going to 15 thereabout, when the devil came to Eve, right, he was using all the suggestions, mm. the do? enticing words. Genesis woman. So in the first service, I was telling them, you are a student, and then a sugar daddy comes to you. 
you know very well that having a relationship with a man twice your age is wrong. But he comes. I will fill your troubles. Mm. I will give you chop money. Mm. I will pay your fees. I will pay your hostel fee. Every month I will give you chop money. I will some or about honor per se or the say why or the nanda sem or the fefefe dear now or this is some wagging to your schooly now go school out bar or so mama sardine mama cabin biscuit aha now I dream in a say so whilst the man is talking you are thinking mm. Mm. You see, when I was at the university, right, we used to have a bunch of ladies. We call them frontliner ladies. Emra, I'm going university. They are the ladies who dress in the latest jeans. Slay queens. Those days, when I was at the university, mobile phones were not available. Emra, I'm going school. I'm mobile phone. The first time I saw a smartphone was by a lady at the library. And, and I who? never, those days, we don't know whether phone even vibrates. And who mobile phone for phone, or Barbie, you could tell, or Bria, you see, dear. Hey, there is a way. Can be one man. Right. A tinny penny so. Unto a man. But the end thereof. And so, you know, death. And you know, you know. Petty, 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 petty lies. And trunk it in kitty and on area. Deception. In Nada. You receive a call. My yeah, friend, where are you? you? You know you are in the house. I'm on the way going to work. Woof you know. What's the mean? I'm cancel my do hand. I can't crap. Mammy one minute. Mammy two minutes. And so now fin I was show at you. There is a way. Can be on my Oh, your life is full of gossip. Those who gossip to you will gossip about you to others. They send you to market. How do you call it? Chobo? Ah. And your man. Oko ne hundred cities. Wawa kan yesi fane fifty cities. Brothers and sisters. Fifty number. Men and brethren. And you are known. Sons and daughters of the prophet. Holiness. Kron kron ye. Is what will connect us to God. Ano ne be kanye ni nyami abum. Kron kron ye. Ano ne be kanye ni nyami abum. Everything in this kingdom thrives on holiness. Now hear this one. There, there, there are levels and weights in glory and for that matter holiness. It is your level of holiness or purity that would determine the extent to which you can command the supernatural. Let me show you. Psalm 45. Verse 7. 6 7. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is the right scepter. Next verse. And this is the emphasis. Thou lovest, this is talking about Jesus Christ. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, have anointed thee with the oil of gladness. Above who? Thy fellows. Hello? Hi. Righteousness is not something you preach. Righteousness is not something you put on your WhatsApp status. Me, I am holy. Righteousness is, something, is not something you assume. It is what you do. 1 John chapter 3 verse 7. 
So, so don't be deceived. That's what the scripture is saying. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that will do it righteousness. Not the one who confesses it to. Mm. So you can be singing in the choir. Every Sunday, we see you ministering in the spirit. But you know very well that the night before, you went to a clubhouse. Righteousness is not something you portray. It is something you do. Sons and daughters of the prophets. Change, let's change our ways. But there is a good news. There is a good news. Please give me that scripture. There's a good news. First Corinthians chapter 6. Corinthians 4. There is a good news for us. There is a good news. You may be living in sin. You may be doing all the bad things. You may be leading an immoral life. But God has a news for you. I say God has a news for you. After today, your ways will change. Let's hear what, the, what God is saying. He says, well, what? No, ye no, no, Papa, this is not a scripture. Please double check for me. Is this second? Perhaps. Yes, this is it. This is the good news. So God is saying that perhaps previously you've been doing this here. Yeah. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God who? So he said, be not deceived. Don't let anybody come and preach you any new gospel. Neither fornicators. No idolaters. No adulteress. No infeminate homosexuals. No abusers of themselves with mankind. Oh, those who sleep, they call it threesome or whatever. Is it uh, something some have forgotten? What is it? Threesome. It will be five some soon. No thieves. May you never steal again. Amen. No covetous. No drunkards. If you have been drinking, you have received the grace to stop drinking. Amen. No revilers. No extortioners. In Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Oh, this is the good news. And such were some of you. Maybe you used to do that. God is telling me to tell you this morning. But we are justified. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we are sanctified. But we are justified. After today, say power will have no dominion over your life. After today, you will not visit that family again. After today, your life will change. Amen. If you not call, we'll probably be sister. Oh, yes, sir. You is an senior. Me at the home. Yes, you at the home. Or the home home at the home. Second good news. As I'm part of some, you know. God says, I may say, if you say you have no sin, or she said, who can say? If you say you have not seen, you deceive yourself. Now, First John chapter one, verse eight through to nine and ten. But if you confess your sins, 
I am faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So this morning, the good news, as I have said, is that God is ready to forgive you. God is ready to change your ways. God is ready to restore the covenant relationship with you. If only you come to him in all boldness and say that, Lord, I have sinned. I used to do that. But today, after hearing your word, oh Lord, I am convicted. I am changing my ways. I am transforming myself by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Something is happening to somebody this morning. BBAC and Anopay. But it is never by your might, by your might, nor by your power. And you are holding, and I say, Utumi, and I'll be to me, there is also. It's not something you can do by yourself. Conconia, yeah, Uber to me, do a holding. So yesterday we were on evangelism at New Site, Adenta New Site. Mm. Myself and the armor bearer for the prophet, Marvin. We went to a, a sport, a drinking sport. About four young, I mean four men, a grown up and an elderly man. And so Marvin was telling me that he's been observing them. What happens is that they go there in the morning and retire in the evening around 7 p.m. Now, whilst we share the word of God with them, we told them about the love of God. And then they open up. This grown-up man said, you know what? What I am doing, I know it is wrong. But I can't stop. There is something in your life that you have been doing. You now you know this one is wrong. But you don't know which force is pulling you. Maybe you have been smoking cigarettes. The world will tell you it's addiction. But, but it, it goes like, beyond that. Then so, uh, bro, sir, there is a power that is holding you. To me be there, today. there is a blindfolding power that holds you captive. To me be there, Ephraim, and, yeah, at at chapter chapter four. Four. and that blindfolding power makes you see sin as pleasurable. Then so, Ephraim, and that blindfolding and yeah, yeah, power holds you captive. What you are doing, you... There is a way that cement right unto a man. For you, that road is right. But meanwhile, it's leading to death. So, the last time, the pro I mean, last week, the prophet was teaching us. He says what? Holiness is something you learn. Let me take it, Let me take it a bit further. Holiness is a spirit. Romans chapter 1 verse 3 to 4. He says He's what? He's talking about Jesus Christ. Hear the word of the Lord. God is talking. Concerning his son Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Next verse. And declared to be the son of God with what? Power. According to the spirit of holiness. By the resurrection from the dead. So there is a spirit of holiness. That is the spirit that resurrected Jesus Christ from the dead. That is the spirit that gave Jesus power. When you read the Old Testament, you probably hear words like the fear of the Lord. So, so the prophet Isaiah was writing in Isaiah 11 2. He was talking about the seven spirits of the Lord. There is one of those spirits at the bottom called the spirit of the fear of the Lord. 
fear of the Lord is the same as the spirit of holiness. The same spirit of holiness, as a matter of fact, it is the Holy Spirit manifesting himself as the spirit of holiness. Now, think about it. Think about this. What? Holy Spirit. That spirit is holy. Right? Yes. So if you want to walk in holiness, you must engage the spirit of holiness. Amen. Oh, if you are clapping, clap unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Joseph. You heard Joseph Abrahama. Bible tells us he feared God. In other words, the spirit of holiness was working in him. And the saint in union him said now. John chapter 1 verse 9 Satan himself attesting to the qualities of a man by name Job the richest man in all of the east he says what does Job fear God for nothing in other words Job feared God the spirit of holiness was working in him our Lord Jesus Christ never knew any sin when he was on earth. The spirit of holiness was working in him. So when Jesus Christ asked us to pray that we should not enter into temptation, what he's telling us is that any time you go on your knees, pray to be empowered by the spirit of holiness. In fact, he says what? Pray that ye may not enter into what? Temptation. You think it was a joke? No, he knows. So you, you, you wake up, whatever your prayer time is. My father, in the name of Jesus, today empower me by the spirit of holiness so as to walk in sanctification. He says what? If a man purges himself from these things, so in other words, words, when you purge yourself from filthiness, iniquity, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 21, so you go in the place of prayer, my father. That must be somebody's prayer today. By the spirit of holiness, purge me of every sin. Oh, Romans, Romans chapter 8 verse 13. Let's look at that scripture. Romans chapter 8 verse 13. This is what God is saying. This is what God is saying. Somebody is being touched right now. Somebody is changing. Somebody is changing. Somebody is changing. You are changing level today. The spirit of holiness is empowering you. The spirit of holiness in the, in the place. You will never remain the same. Your life will never remain the same. The Lord God will purge you of every sin this morning. Receive the power. This is Apostle Paul writing to the church in Rome. He says, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit, the spirit of holiness, do mortify. Mortify means put to death. The deeds of the body, lies, immorality, mm. pride. Mm. Paul said, Na se muti, a se huna unfem, a, mube u, na se mudi hon hon kumwa, se mudi hon hon kumwa, ni perduyano, ni nye, a, mube tenase, 
He says, if you mortify the deeds of the flesh, ye shall live. Amen. What Paul is saying is this. Anything that fights with your spiritual growth, anything that will contaminate your body, anything that will come into your system as a sin and separate you from God, put it to death by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of Holiness. So, this scripture will be a basis for a prayer. My Father, by the Spirit of Holiness, put to death, or better still, mortify the deeds of my body, Such. the deeds of pride, the deeds of telling lies, the deeds of stealing. The deeds of gossip. My God. Mortify these deeds in my body. And present me. Sanctify. Whole and meet for your use. Amen. Such a bit of a man. You know, so I bet me a bomb. I say, a radiate. Yes, sir. Oh, who can come out of the My uncle, who never knew me. Say a throw, say a chrono, say a jamai. Now, pray, pray, now, see, see me. Mama, to me, Please I never want. assume holiness. Mm. Purity doesn't come by your effort. It comes by engaging the Holy Spirit. I'm going to the closing very soon. And I'm going to share with you the final scripture. Psalm 24. Verse 3. Who are those who benefit from the covenant of God? Who are those who go to God and God will hear them? Who are those when they pray, God hears? This is the psalmist speaking. Now this same psalmist said somewhere earlier on that if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Then this same man came back and said, My God, by the Spirit, search my heart and know my, search me and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. My God, Lead me to the way everlasting. He came back and said, you know what? Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? The holy place of God. Where you have covenant relationship with him. Where you benefit from the inheritances available to you. Or who shall stand in his holy place? Standing in the holy place of God means he is about to respond to you. Now let's see those who are qualified for this. He that have clean hands, mm. he's not a thief. He doesn't tell lies. He's not covetous. Mm. And a pure heart, he doesn't gossip. <laughs> Who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, mm. nor sworn deceitfully. No man across who who deal. These are the people who will stand before God. Holiness. Purity. Today I want you to search your heart. Like the psalmist says. Search me. Oh God. And know my heart. Try me oh Lord. And know my thoughts. My God. See if there be any wicked way in me. This morning I lift up my hands. Forgive me of my sins. Purge me of every sinful life. Empower me by the spirit of holiness. So I can walk in sanctification. Empower me by the spirit of sanctification. I want to live a life pleasing unto you. Somebody is going to change this morning. The spirit of the Lord is here. If Healings are taking place. Lives are being transformed. That sin which has become 
a torment in your life by the spirit of holiness receive the grace receive the power receive the anointing your life will never be the same again the spirit of holiness will purge you right now somebody be on your feet begin to talk to God right now to me, I want to say, I bet you were free. To me, what I said, I bet you were free. I don't want to form swore. I do my father empower me by the spirit of holiness. I want to live a holy life. God, sanctify me afresh with the spirit of holiness. My God, by the Holy Spirit. And now Purge me from own. every sinful nature. Oh, by the spirit of holiness. Be born is soon Sanctify me whole. Oh, Body, soul, and home. spirit. Ah, I want to be a vessel unto you, O oh Lord. Something must change in my life. It is happening. It is happening. It is happening. My God, pray me. I used to be a liar. I used to be a fornicator. I used to be a thief. I used to convert by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the Spirit of Holiness. My life will never be the same. If somebody pray, the Spirit of Holiness is here. Something is about to happen to you. You will never remain the same. Pray unto God. My God, search me right now. My God, know my heart. Try my thoughts. Wherever I have gone wrong, something must change in my life. I must never be the same. I am before the throne of grace right now. I want to renew the covenant relationship. My God, change me right now. Pray like a soldier on the battlefield. I need sanctification. I want to remain in this supreme covenant. Hey, something must change. Something must change. I don't want to go the same. I need a purging. I need a purging. I need a purging. Oh. I need a purging. Yeah. I need a change of life. Yeah. I need a change of life. Yeah. My life will never be yeah. the same. I received a spirit of holiness. Amen. Yeah, somebody pray, 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 Amen. pray. Amen. Amen. Ready to come in. My boy, I need to pray. My boy, I need to pray. My boy, I need to pray. I am coming, Lord. Amen unto thee. Oh, we are praying. Wash me, cleanse me by the blood that flows. From Calvary, I am coming, Lord. I am coming, Lord. The Lord is working on you this morning. Christ, when he was on earth, knew no sin. No iota of sin was found in Jesus. That was the basis for his empowerment. And we all want to be like Jesus. Now there is a song I love because it's also a prayer. Eric, you know that song? I want to be more like you, Jesus. Jesus. We know that song singing. I, I want, want to be, be more like you. 
I want to be a vessel you were through. I want to be more. Is somebody singing and praying? Oh, Jesus, I want to be more like you. I want to be a vessel you work through. I want to be more like you. Oh, Jesus, I want to be more like you. Jesus, I want to be more like you. Make that your prayer this morning. I want to be a vessel you work through. I want to be more like you. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your visitation this morning. We thank you for appearing to us by your word. We thank you for the purging power of the spirit of holiness. We are grateful unto you because our lives are not going to be the same again. We thank you for the purging. We thank you for the mortification of the deeds of the flesh this morning. And we thank you for the empowerment to walk in holiness. Father, we are grateful to you because by the spirit of holiness, we shall walk in sanctification. And our services will be acceptable unto thee. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we give you the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. But you are here this morning. You don't know Jesus. You are not born again. The Lord is calling you. You can never walk in this covenant. You can never ever experience the move of the whole, the spirit of holiness in your life if you are not born again. We are all bowing down our heads right now. And as we sit or better still pray and you know you are not born again, the Lord is calling you. Please lift up your hands. I want to pray with you. You don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Without accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you cannot experience this covenant relationship. I want to pray with you. If you are like that, you are lift up your hands. Please come to me here at the altar. You want to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You want to accept Jesus Christ. The Lord is calling you. The Lord is inviting you to his table. He wants you to renew the covenant with him right now. Wherever you are, it's a personal decision. Don't be shy of the person sitting next to you. It is between you and God. Today is the day of decision for you. And then I bet you and the Lord God is calling you. He wants to change your life. He wants to sanctify you. He wants to give you with the spirit, with the spirit of holiness. Hallelujah. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus Christ? Please take your seats. Amen. In the first service, the Holy Spirit led me to pray for all those who celebrated their birthdays during the week or you're about to celebrate your birthday. And I, I believe it's right that I do the same here at the second service. If you have celebrated your birthday within the week, or better still, in the coming week, you are going to celebrate your birthday. Please walk to me. I want to pray with you. Walk to me right now. In case you have celebrated your birthday, or you are going to be celebrating your birthday in the coming week, I want to pray with you. It's a privilege to do that. Hallelujah. Anybody who has clapped for, for them by the next birthday of yours, you will see a change of level in your life. Hallelujah. Please bow down your heads. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for the lives of our dear sisters and brother who have celebrated their birthdays or better still about to celebrate their birthday this week. Lord, we are grateful to you for adding another year to their lives. We thank you for the blessings of a new age that has come upon them. 
We thank you for the empowerment by the spirit of holiness. And we thank you for how far you have brought them. Lord, I cover them by the blood of Jesus. They are exempted from any attack of the enemy. By the same Passover blood, that blood will be a mark of exemption upon their lives. In the days to come and the years to come, may they be empowered for exploits. Lord, bless the works of their hands. Elevate them. Empower them to do exploits. Let each and every one of them standing here become kingdom promoters. And I decree and declare, your lives have changed from today. You are empowered for exploits. You are the new generation Daniels of your family. None shall be compared unto you because your wisdom will surpass that of your siblings. You will give a testimony and say, I passed through faith word and indeed my life has never been the same. May the Lord go with you. The hand of the Lord will be upon you. His finger will be in your affairs. Everything your hand touches will be a success in the mighty name of Jesus. Go in this might and do exploit for the kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. You are blessed. God give you all the blessings you have been asking him for. <laughs> Hallelujah. Happy birthday to you once again. God bless you. You can do better. You can do better. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can add a shout unto God. Amen. Amen. What are we saying to our reverend? Reverend, God bless you. What a word. I'm telling you. Amen. By the time it was going to invoicing and invoicing, and it was coming to gossip and lies. Hallelujah. I saw some people now be up in the assembly. Amen. Reverend, God bless you. What a word. We have been blessed and touched. We pray that as Lord, the Lord God has empowered us from today, our lives will change. Hallelujah. Prepare your second offering, your seed offering. And this one, you are saying that you are going to sow into this word. That already, Use it as a point of contact and pray and tell God, by this sacrifice, Lord, I am breaking the, 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 the bondage, the, 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 the anything that holds me, the power that keeps you addicted to a particular thing. You want to pray and tell God, Lord, as you bring forth this seed offering, may your life never be the same. Hallelujah. The choir will take over. Rise to your feet. Mi wo nyamin, oyo to fo wa we.